Hey, how you doing? Uh, you find me in the beautiful Club Brighton site, and here I am in a motorhome, ready to go. Why? Well, because for various reasons with which you will be acquainted, this is how we're going to be doing Club Week this week. Your forums are going to be taking place through this medium, and I'm going to be speaking to some of my favourite people from the club and beyond. So if you're ready, let's get going. Welcome to Club Week. It's time now to have a chat to Martin Spencer, who's the technical manager for the club, and also Matt Morgan, who is the events executive. You're wondering what they do. Well, Martin is kind of the theory of Caravan, and Matt will show you the practical. Hello, guys. How are you? Very well. How are you? Yeah, well, yeah very, you. very well. Um, we're going to get technical. Are you ready for that? Hey. Excellent. But these uh, will ever be. <laughs> uh, well, listen, you're you're the oracle, Martin. You are the person that people come to um, when they're struggling technically. Uh, that must be a fascinating job. Do they ever come up with questions that completely stump you? Um, rarely completely. Sometimes we have to have a bit of a think. Um, sometimes they're, they're questions that don't really have an answer. Um, my my favourite one ever was how long will it take to fill up the caravan toilet? <laughs> and uh, we did come up with a variety of uh, factors that were relevant, but we couldn't give a specific answer. Uh, it, uh, I, I, there are so many variables involved there, uh, which maybe, exactly. I won't, yeah. maybe we won't go into those yeah. right now. Um, it yeah. must be a, a fascinating job though. Can you explain to me how how it works exactly at the club. Uh, how many guys have you got? How many people have you got working on it? And um, how do people get in contact with it? Yeah, there's, uh, there's a team of six of us all together. Um, five, five of them really doing the, uh, the direct contact side of things. And then myself overseeing what advice they give, doing some of the kind of background work, finding out what the new topics are, what the new information is and feeding that through to those who you end up talking to, whether you contact them by phone or email or web chat, or even if you uh, write them a letter, which you can still do if you really want to. So they, they, they have uh, a, a tremendous knowledge and a tremendous resource behind them in terms of archive material and reference material, and that kind of thing. Martin, is it a service that's only available for members? Uh, most of our contact is with members, um, and that might be uh, either a very experienced caravanner who's decided to go and buy a first motorhome, perhaps after many years of caravanning, uh, or it might be somebody who's a completely new member, uh, may not really know what questions to ask us even, uh, and we're, we'll quite happily chat away to them. There are no dumb questions, uh, and we really, really love to help uh, novices get over their initial fears and confusions that you'll always have with any new activity. We also do talk to quite a lot of non-members or, or, or at least those who haven't decided to become a member just yet. Uh, and we can help you understand which kind of leisure vehicle is right for you. Check things like, do you have the right driving license to drive a larger motorhome? So we'll, we'll happily talk to anybody. I wish I'd known about you when I started, genuinely. My most fearful moment was sterilizing my water tank. Uh, before I started, I bet you know all about. I bet you could tell me all about that. Yeah, it's very, very important. Um, particularly if, if your van's not in use all the time. Um, I mean, you're sat in a lovely camper van at the moment. It, it might you might be using that every weekend, but a lot of the time your caravan road home will sit out of action for for weeks, maybe months at a time over the winter. So unlike the water system in your house where you're using it all the time, you, there's a tendency to get stagnant water sitting in the pipe. So it's very, very important that you, uh, uh, that you sterilize it. Uh, one, one thing that many people don't know is they, they assume that a bad water system will cause you a stomach upset. In fact, it's much more likely to cause you a respiratory problem. Uh, and right now that's not something you want to be having uh, because it's going to cause a lot of confusion. You really don't want to go away 
on site and end up with a respiratory infection uh, that you then start to wonder, is it something more serious? Yeah, well, th there you go. I'm learning already. Uh, and we've only been on the call for a couple of minutes. What is the most common <laughs> question or query that you get? People are constantly surprising us by asking us things we haven't been asked before, uh, or at least not for a very long while. But there's certain common themes, though. We get a lot of what we call outfit matching queries. So uh, for the caravanners, will, will, will a particular car and a particular caravan be compatible? And we have an enormous technical database that we use to, uh, to work that out. We, we've got technical details of I think it's 115,000 models of car and over 26,000 models of caravan. So there's a few permutations we can go through. Another very common one will be driving licenses. Um, if, you, if you're fortunate to be a little younger than, uh, than I am, you've almost certainly got a, a driving license when you took your, your first car license. It's a little more restricted than, than those of us who are a little older are. Um, it doesn't make a lot of difference to most people. But if you want to drive the largest of motorhomes or you want a really large car with a large caravan, then you need to double check that you've got the license to do it. And we can do that for people as well. I mean, this year is extraordinary in, in so many ways. Uh, I can only imagine the extended season, for instance, has, has that meant different kinds of questions coming your way? Normally, we're talking at the start of October. People will be thinking about winding down for the, for the mainstream touring season now. We'd be getting a lot of questions about putting outfits into storage for the winter raining down the water systems, preparing them for to, to, to overwinter safely, that kind of thing. And what we're getting instead is an awful lot of people wanting to carry on touring into well into the autumn, perhaps well into the winter, uh, and really make best use of the, of the leisure vehicle they've got in a year where they couldn't use it for the first half of the year. Uh, the other thing we'd often get at this time of year would be people going abroad to overwinter in the Mediterranean. Um, lovely idea, disappear off it in October, don't come back till March perhaps. Uh, that's a lot harder for people to do this year as well. It's a lot less desirable to go away to a country where you may have to face uh, quite a few restrictions. So what we're seeing is far more people looking to stay here, but also to stay active. We've got loads of sites open until at least New Year and quite a lot all year round. Um, over half of our CL network is open all year round as well. So there's a lot of people perhaps planning a rather different Christmas to normal. Um, Christmas in the caravan, why not? Um, there's plenty of members will tell you that it's perfectly possible to cook a turkey on a barbecue. Uh, more importantly, is it possible to enjoy uh, early December in Skegness in a caravan? Of course it is. <laughs> you have to be a little bit tough and... <laughs> You have to do a little bit of planning, to be fair, as well. Um, the weather is not going to be quite as favourable, probably, as it would normally be in August in Skegness, where it will clearly be in the sort of low 40s and constant sunshine, as always. Um, but modern caravans are very, very good from this point of view. Uh, almost all of them, if they're a, a caravan or, or a, a coach-built motorhome, um, they tend to be built to what, what's called a, a grade three insulation standard. That, that's a European standard for, for how they're built. And that means that the heating system and the insulation will be capable of keeping them really nice and snug down to an external temperature of about minus 15 degrees C. Camper vans, van conversions tend to be a little bit harder to insulate. Uh, so you really do need good heating in those. Um, you might also need a a good duvet or a good sleeping bag to keep you stung overnight. Um, it's really just the chilly mornings that you need to plan for and make sure you know where your slippers are. Yeah, and always sleep in socks. Very, very important. No shame in that at all. Uh, Martin, excellent advice. 
Thank you very much. I, I love the fact you're you're the oracle. So you're there in theory, giving people the advice. And then we've got Matt, who actually tells them how they can go out and experience it themselves with training courses. Hey, Matt, how are you? Hey, Matt. Yeah, really good. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, so uh, tell me about the uptake for training courses this year, because probably well from what i've been hearing we've got people coming into the past time that maybe have, have never dreamt of it before take up has been really good given the challenges that obviously everybody has faced this year um people want to get out and understand how to do these activities both safely and correctly and, and get a little bit of experience in in maneuvering the caravan and the motorhome you know it's not a small vehicle that you're driving around some some back roads sometimes so all the practice the better um you know what quite apart from anything else it's avoiding the embarrassment when you get to the site and you have to ask somebody else how to operate the bit of machinery you've just spent tens of thousands of pounds on uh that's, that's it not yeah, a good look exactly a, that um, talk me through the courses then what do they comprise well uh, so we've got three courses that members and non-members alike can go on. It's all about gaining experience. The first one is our practical caravan course. It's designed for those new to maneuvering your caravan or new to caravanning as a whole. We have a second caravan course called the caravan maneuvering course. That's designed for people really with a little bit more experience in towing. Say they've got one of the licenses that allows them to tow, but they've not really done a lot of it in the past. The good thing with these two courses is attendees bring their own vehicles to the course with a tow bar, of course, very key, um, and attach one of our very light training course caravans um, to practice manoeuvring in a nice, safe environment. Similarly, the final course that we have on offer at the moment is our motorhome and camper van manoeuvring course. They again bring their own outfit to the course, gives them that opportunity to practice manoeuvring getting used to the size and shape of the vehicle um, that they might not otherwise get in a nice, safe environment. Who's running these courses, Matt? So we go out to 13 different venues at the moment, and we've got instructors across England, Scotland and Wales that are delivering those courses uh, most, most weekends or every other weekend, depending on what fits in with everybody's schedule. It's fabulous. Uh, and how do I get on to, to book one of these? It is a very straightforward path, Matt. All you need to do is go onto the club website, camc.com forward slash courses, and that'll take you to absolutely everything you need to get that confidence and get out there in this, in this pastime. It's absolutely fabulous talking to you guys. I feel like I've tapped in to the, you know, caravan and motorhome college of knowledge. <laughs> you're the you guys it's matt and martin's university <laughs> of getting out there fabulous stuff thank you so much for your Get time guys there. yeah cheers guys right see you later <laughs>